Hey, it's Jordan. Quick note on this one. I interviewed UFC fighter Julio Arce a day before the original UFC 249 card was canceled. There is now a super card planned for May 9th, which includes the previously scheduled Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje fight. Since Julio and I discussed this fight, I chose to concentrate on it during this episode. If you don't care about the UFC or sports in general, don't worry. This will not be a sports podcast moving forward, I promise. I just thought it would be cool to talk to someone from the only major American pro sports organization trying to operate during the coronavirus pandemic. So here's my interview with Julio Arce. Welcome to the Pop Dust Podcast. I'm Jordan Edwards, and today we have UFC featherweight Julio Arce. Julio, how are you doing, man? Great, man. Good. As good as I can be during this quarantine time. Yeah, tell me what your day-to-day is like now. Like, what have you been doing to occupy yourself? You know, for me, like a day-to-day, it's been just kind of sticking to a schedule, um, making sure that I'm trying, I'm getting my training in the morning, even if it's doing it in my own room. Uh, but making sure I'm getting my, you know, my strength training, my skill work in there and doing the best I can. We are, um, I'm doing uh, live classes, teaching some live classes through Twitch. So, you know, then like my students from my school and the, all the other Tiger Showman schools, you know, they get to still take class because, you know, we were all, everyone was pretty much forced to close their gym doors. You talk about fitness. I mean, how can you even get anywhere near replicating what you can get in a gym? It's, it's, it's pretty difficult to replicate that. And it, it's, it gets a little difficult because uh, sometimes it's like, look, you know, it's kind of it's just you. You have to motivate yourself to get your, your workouts in. Sometimes you just don't feel like it because you're home. Home is where you're kind of just comfortable. You want to chill. But the good thing about like when I'm teaching the classes through Twitch, though, it gets me going. Because like it's it's making me work. I got to make sure I'm showing everything really good. So then, what they're watching on the other side of the screen, you know, they're following along the best they can. So that gives me like another workout on its own. But it doesn't replicate what you know. It's like being in the gym, you know, with your teammates, training, and so on. Yeah, and and you're you're still in New York, right? You didn't you didn't escape to some fancy chateau somewhere. No, <laughs> the UFC has become basically a John claude Van Damme movie with secret locations and fights. Who knows what they're, what's going to actually happen? How do you feel about UFC moving forward and with this whole secret location strategy that they have? They're doing what they can, but it's pretty, you know, it's, 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 it's a risky move. Cause look, this thing is everywhere. And, you know, at first, you know, like I know, like a lot of people, weren't taking it as serious and there's still some people that don't take it as serious as they should mm-hmm. but you know it's people are taking a pretty big risk on this because you know look let's say they this you know this event does happen i mean it's crazy that they were able to you know they're they're finding the people to be able to make this whole thing happen it, it's insane would you personally would you feel safe being on one of these mystery location cards Nah, that's like, no. not I me. Mean, not, not especially like where we are. We're literally like in the in the heart of it all, and this whole, you know, virus thing. It's like it, it's not worth the risk because, yeah. Let's say you do like you. Let's say, I do take a fight and end up fighting like over, over you know, like to this location. You know, I'm exposing myself, and you know, I have uh, people in my family and people I live with that have underlying conditions. I can't risk that. It's not, it's not fair to them. And beyond the health, the, the, the risk of infection, there's also just the practicality of fitness. You, how do you have a traditional fight camp leading up to yeah, something there, like this? There is none. Because if, if, let's say if someone does take a fight, it's like, okay, now you're meeting up with, you're trying to get ready for a fight. You're trying to meet up with, you know, people like your trainers, but you haven't been with them 20, you know, 24-7. So they could have gotten exposed to something or you could be exposing, you know, them to something. And it's like, you don't, you don't know. And it makes it super difficult. Moving into the event itself, you know, with Habib no longer in play, no longer fighting and he's, you know, being replaced by Justin Gaethje. How do you feel 
about the impact that has on the importance of the fight. You know, they've tagged an interim belt to this. Do, do you still care? Do, is, is this still worth watching? Of course it is. You know, if you have like two of the the best in the world going at it, it's pretty interesting because technically Tony Ferguson is still the interim champ. Yeah, so, you know, it's like he becomes interim. If he win, if he wins, he becomes interim. Double double interim, double interim champ. Yeah, I feel like for him, it's like it's it's like a it's like a lose. I wouldn't say a lose lose because, but somewhat close to it because. Okay, let's say he wins this fight. Now he has to wait till this thing. And I know, like, Habib, he has a, a Ramadan mm -hmm. plus that. So God knows how much longer it's going to take for that fight to eventually happen. And if he loses, you know, there goes a, a super a huge fight that's not going to happen for a longer period of time. I predicted a few weeks ago when all this was really going down that you would see a Habib Connor fight by the end of the year just for the revenue and the excitement that would bring. So you have another aspect of, of this happening in, in the lightweight division. You know, I, I feel like that's going to be the setup for it because look, we, we all know that with this all, all this, this virus thing going on, everyone's taking a hit, you know, the fighters, especially the fighters, the people who are just relying on, on fighting to, you know, to make ends meet. That's tough for them. They take a huge hit. And then, you know, like I know probably the company's taking a hit in, on its own because they can't hold the vents. But, you know, so I'm guessing it has to, they, if they do a Connor Khabib too, they would have to, it would make up for it partially. But right. it's, it's still, there's going to be like literally like an event every single day from now on because they have to also make up for everything else, the time lost. So we'll see what happens, man. Now, um, a lot of people aren't even ga giving Gaethje a chance. Do you give him a chance? Do you do you think this will go more than two rounds? Hey, you know, look, it, in, in fights, Tony Ferguson has gotten rocked by people. And, you know, he, you know his cardio is insane, but Justin Gage is a man that just comes forward and just freaking, he, he doesn't care. So he's going in there with nothing to lose which makes him even more dangerous. He pointed out that if he loses, he's basically in the same place he was before anyway. So Yeah, you know. he's not losing anything. And he's done nothing but have amazing fights since he started competing in the UFC. So, Yeah, that dude's freaking most violent man right there. So let's see what happens. Okay, look, it could be a banger. It could be like a one-rounder. Who knows? Well, one thing you're going to you're going to get with Habib out, you're it's going to be more of a stand-up fight. You're not going to have the wrestling. Um so in a way, you could argue that this is going to be better for the fans than the Habib fight. Am am I just am I kind of making an excuse for that or is is there some truth to that? No, nah, man. Look, it's like Habib does what he has to do to win. It. He doesn't care. It's mm -hmm. like but, you know, like when you got two dudes like Ferguson and Gagey who just stand up and they just, just – Gagey, Gagey hasn't used his wrestling, so he just wants to stand up and bang. So, just, look, it's going to be an exciting fight unless he surprises everybody. Like everyone says, you know, maybe he uses his wrestling. Who knows? Now, it's been a while since you have been in the octagon. You lost that, that real hard split decision in November. Coronavirus aside, are you itching to get back out there? For me, I, I'm, I actually am. You know, I'm going through, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, healing, I'm healing some uh, little nagging injuries here and there. So, like, it, this was actually a good time off because, uh, you know, it got to help me just kind of really, you know, heal up. And at the same time, you know, just kind of focus on certain things to make my game better. I'm just looking to get back to the gym and start training again. Get yeah. everything just back, you know, in routine, things back to bring some just like normalcy back to life, you know, into, into my life. You've talked about the, the health aspects and the, and the, uh, the danger and the uncertainty that comes with these secret location fights. But is there an aspect to this that's actually kind of exciting, kind of interesting? It actually is because it's, it's, it's like something that never, there's never like really been, done it's like you know and then you just think it's like you, you're, you're constantly trying to like solve the mystery of where they're gonna do this and who's gonna be sanctioning this and like 
who's going to be there present. It feels like Street Fighter, right? It feels like like Street Fighter, like there's going to be tiki, tiki torches in the background or something while people are fighting. Well, it's like, a, you remember like the first Mortal Kombat movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take them to the island. You're going to have to run into your opponent and then you're going to fight each other. It's like some shit like that. Right. I, I, was, I was watching highlights from... Um, an MMA event in Poland a few weeks ago and they were they were fighting in a small kind of high school gym sized arena and they had done some really cool stuff with the lights around the arena some blue mood lighting and stuff so I hope UFC you know they're going to be fighting in small areas you know makes it look cool well you got some people joking about you know like the whole fire island thing or like I'm, I was hoping maybe for like a like a beach front like set the octagon on the beach and you see like the waves crashing in the background while the fight's going on you know <laughs> yeah who knows who knows it's like it, everyone's imagination starts going wild on this That's right how they really do it i want to talk to you a little bit about the featherweight division itself you know that was holloway's division forever it still is in some eyes how do you see that division where it's at now and do you think it's still max's division to lose even though he's not the champion anymore um, you know what? I just think I just think he's done so much in that division that it kind of still his because of his um, kind of like his resume in that division. Mm -hmm. So you know, even though he's no longer the champ, you know, he still accomplished so much by just like literally just putting people away. And look, even the the, the fight he he it, when he lost his title, it it was a close fight. So you know, it's. I think like uh, like uh, if Alex if Volkanovski ends up doing kind of like with the same thing that Max is doing and a little more, then you can claim that division for then he can take that division. But as far as like just the resume of work, I think uh, Max Holloway's had that division for a while. You, you do these interviews. That's got to be you know, make you anxious. I mean, I'm sure you, I'd, like if I was you, I'd be getting pumped up just talking about it. Just the idea of of fighting again. You know. Again, like I said, you know, like my fire's still burning. I can't wait till this whole thing is over. I get back to, you know, training and just get, you know, eventually get to, you know, my camp and just do what I want, you know, do what I love to do. Now, you, when you interviewed with Sure Dog a, a few weeks ago, it was a different world. It, the, the, um, the quarantine had just begun and you guys talked a lot about the the economic impact of fighters who aren't who don't have multi-million dollar contracts and yeah. and you're talking about ufc fighters who you know really need the fights to get by that's not even go into people fighting in invicta or bellator some of the smaller yeah. promotions have you been talking to other fighters what's the vibe out there what's the atmosphere what what kind of feedback have you been getting from other fighters in the mma yeah. world it, I think it's it's how how people are with their money. You know, it's like, because look, some people could be just fine. But other people, they, you know, like they said, how they manage their money, you know, it, it, it's on them. So if this is, they're relying on fighting to make ends meet, it's like they got to make sure like they're pretty much like being meticulous with everything that they're doing with their money. Because if not, like you hit something like this, you can't fight, you can't do much. It's like that it starts; to, it, it's gonna hurt you. But you got people like I said, you got some fighters who make a lot, so they're they're pretty good. Other fighters who are maybe making more from their sponsors, so it's like you're kind of getting them by. And but then you got some fighters who are just still, you know, they don't have what everyone else has. Right. They just have that paycheck from the from the promotion. You know, then it hurts them because now they can't leave their house to get, a, you know, because there's not a lot of hiring going because everything's closing down and they don't want to put their families at risk. So, it, you know, like it, it hurts them. And they're not going to come out and say it, but it, it, it hurts everybody a lot. And you talked about you wouldn't be comfortable being on one of these quarantine cards in the jungle. <laughs> um, but when money is a motivation, when you can say, you know, I could get that fight of the night bonus that, that could I, that could possibly be in my future. That's enough motivation to get somebody out there, even if they don't feel necessarily safe. That's true. You know, it's, it's easy for you. It's easy for you sitting on the couch. You're not on the card, 
But for someone who was who has been on who's been on the two forty nine card for a long time, you know, it's hard to say no. Hang on a second, I don't want that paycheck. Yeah, yeah, like especially like if they've been, you know, training for X amount of time to prepare for it. It's it, 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 it's hard to just be like, you know what, just abandon shit. And we haven't even talked about the one thing that is coming up in every sport is the idea of competing without fans, without a crowd. Do you think that factors into the competition in MMA? Or when you're fighting and you you fought in big arenas before, do you even hear the crowd? Does it matter? That everyone's different. I mean, maybe like when they're, they don't really like, everyone kind of blocks out the crowd. So, you know, there's good for me. Like I'm just focused on, you know, what my corner saying and the person in front of me, I block everything else out. Well, you sure, you'd sure be able to hear your corner. Yeah. With no fans. Very clear. But then you have some people that kind of, they, they get the energy from the, from the, from the, from the crowd. So, you know, it, it's, it's different. It was it's like that, uh, that, uh, UFC card in, in Brazil. The, the Brazil thing was bizarre because they were fighting in a, in a giant arena with no one. You know, exactly. that would be creepy to me. That would, there'd be some like some eeriness in there. Is it wasn't like in the, the fights in like China that they stay very quiet too? Feel like there's no one there. So that wouldn't bother you. The fight itself, you know, forget about the health risks. If you were fighting for no fans, would you change? Would it be any different for you? No, I think I think it's actually going to benefit a lot of people because, you know, it's kind of like when you're in, in in your gym doing your your sparring rounds. I think you would make better decisions because yeah. if, if, you know, say you're fighting and you land a punch and the crowd cheers, you know, you could be more aggressive than you really wanted to be because the crowd is egging you on. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, you got just, you can just hit the person and do something else off of it. Like you, like some people feel pressured by the crowd. Some people don't. So it's like, and I guess it's also the difference between a, a young inexperienced fighter and someone who's been around the block a few times, you know, exactly. Yeah. All right, Julio, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for being my guest on the pop dust podcast. Of course, man. Thank you for having me. Stay yeah. safe in the day in Brooklyn. I'll try. I'll try and, and find something to do and find some way to stay in shape. Yeah, man. Take care. All right, man. See you later. Thanks for listening to the Pop Dust Podcast. I'm Jordan Edwards. You can find me at jordanedwardsstudio.com and at jordanedwardsstudio on Instagram. And be sure to check out the latest in pop culture and entertainment at popdust.com.